What's up guys, it is Chris back with another watch video and today we have a pretty cool watch to show you. Of course, it is a Seiko. It's actually lent into the channel from Rock the Watch. Matt over at the Rock the Watch channel lent me in this watch to review. He has a great channel, go check him out. I will put a link to his channel in the description below. He has some amazing watches, sort of the tip of the iceberg with him. He has Grand Seiko, Rolex, uh, Zenith, tons of awesome brands and he's constantly buying watches uh, sort of has the same problem that I do and he makes some really cool videos so definitely check out his channel uh, and as I mentioned this is a Seiko it is the Frost Monster or the Ice Monster the SBDC 073 uh, actually a very good looking watch it comes in very simple Seiko packaging so cardboard box cardboard inner box uh, inside is just this sort of foam pillow you get the hang tag here. I believe he bought this on the gray market or on the secondary market used uh, because this is a Japanese domestic model that was discontinued. Now, I believe it was Japanese domestic, but uh, correct me if I am wrong. And this is discontinued. They no longer make this. They make other iterations of this, but this was the original sort of frost dial that they did with the monster. It comes in your typical monster package. Uh, you get a, I believe it's a 42 millimeter case, which is what the uh, the monsters come in. Now it depends on where you actually catch it, but it's a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but it's around 42 millimeters. Uh, the lug to lug, you have a pretty true lug to lug because you sort of have straight links on here. Uh, 48.1, 48.0, depending on again, where you measure it, but it's around that 48 millimeter uh, lug span. And then of course, you have a 12.8 millimeter thickness. You get a 6R15 in here. That's the same movement that I have in my SBDC061. Uh, really awesome movement, very reliable, and uh, just nothing too fancy, but it's a very reliable Seiko movement. This does get a hard lex crystal, and it also gets a Cyclops here. You either love it or hate it. Some people really hate it. I don't mind it. Uh, you have a chapter ring where the uh, indices are sort of set into that chapter ring. Uh, the indices are actually applied. Now, that is something that the monster has been doing for a very long time. Again, that's sort of a design cue of the watch. Either you love that or you hate it because it sort of cuts out the, uh, the chapter ring. I do like that as well. Um, the dial is really why you would buy this watch. You get that snowflake look or that frost look on the dial. Um, it's meant to look like snow or ice. It looks really good. Uh, you get a color match date wheel. It's not color match. It's color match to the indices uh, there at the 3 o'clock as well. And then um, that takes the place of the 3 o'clock indice. Uh, it just says Seiko, Prospects. Then, of course, Divers 200 meters right there. And that's really it. It's a very simple package. The bracelets on the uh, monsters have always been pretty decent. You have kind of a uh, weird looking bracelet. I don't know what you would actually call it, but you do get those polished center links, but they're not really center links. They're part of uh, the full link. So each link is just one full link. Uh, and then the, the top portion of that link is polished. And then the uh, area where it actually meets the case is polished. And then the side of the case is polished there as well. So it's all a nice transition. Um, you get a 20 millimeter lug width, but the bracelet actually flares out to, I think, 22 millimeters. So it sort of lines up with the, uh, with the lugs. You have very, very short lugs. That's why you have 48 millimeter lug width with a 42 millimeter watch. Uh, bezel action, always good on Seiko. And Rock the Watch seems to be always very lucky with Seiko and all of his Seikos line up. 12 o'clock in to see the, um, the chapter ring and of course the, uh, the triangle there at 12 o'clock. It always lines up for him. Uh, I, I seem to have very bad luck with that. Screwed in crown, screwed in case back. Case back is your very typical uh, Seiko case back. And then of course you're getting a press clasp with four positions of micro adjust. Uh, decent clasp considering the price when this originally came out this is decent but the, the price that rock the watch paid for this uh, I don't know if it's that decent but I think he paid over a thousand dollars I think he paid around fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars for this now I agree with paying overpriced for a watch that is actually um, discontinued now if this was actually in production and you paid overpriced for this um, that would make no sense to me since they're not making this anymore and that's it there's a limited number of them out there 
paying a little bit over price or a lot in this case, it makes sense if it's a watch that you must have in your collection and he really loves these watches so it makes sense to me. This makes sense to me. Um, you know, if you're buying a Rolex that you could actually buy at retail at a store, even though you probably will never be able to do that unless you have a very good relationship with your AD, um, and then you pay double on the gray market because you can't get it in the store, I think that doesn't make sense. This makes a lot more sense because they aren't making them. You cannot walk into a store and buy this if you wanted to. And if you could, it would be new old stock. It wouldn't be a current model. So that does make sense. Uh, Crown is unsigned, and of course you get drilled lugs on here. And there's a bunch of different finishings on the on the case in general. You have polishing, brushing, and bead blasting. Uh, polishing along the edge of the bracelet and on the tops, as I mentioned, you get uh, brushing and polishing. And then the uh, actual buckle is a combination of brushing and polishing. You just have a chamfered edge. Pressed scissor here. And then, of course, uh, this one you do not get a pressed diver's extension. I actually like that better on my SBDC061. I get a press divers extension, which doesn't make any sense. 6R15, like I said, very reliable, uh, really robust movement, nothing to look at. So you get a closed case back. I'll do pictures of all this and close up so you can see. I will be doing a comparison of this watch against this watch. This is the Seastein that I actually have in for review slash giveaway. I'm doing a giveaway of this watch. Um, and I just wanna compare the two because uh, obviously, this is an homage to this watch, uh, not an, a direct homage to this specific model. However, it is an homage. Um, and I have to say, quality-wise, there are a lot of differences um, and a lot of similarities. But we'll do that at a later date. Uh, really quickly, let me throw it on my wrist, and then we will uh, do a loom shot and then wrap up the video. Today, I have a really special watch on. This is Lynn Verdelin. This is the... Uh, uh, this is a three timer. I think they call it. It's the by four meter by four meter. I believe is what it's called. I've been a big fan of Lynn Verdelin for a very long time and I have one in for review and I am super excited about this watch. Obviously the design of this watch was that you would be able to put a computer on top, uh, a little dive computer or a ski computer or hiking computer or something like that. Um, this came on the bracelet. The bracelet is phenomenal. It really is a phenomenal, phenomenal bracelet. Does get an ETA movement, so uh, the price is kind of expensive, and that's kind of the reason why I've been hesitant to buy one. Um, and we'll get into that in the review when we actually go over that. But Frost Monster on my seven and a half inch wrist, awesome. Monsters have always looked really good on my wrist. They are very comfortable. They wear really nicely, they look really good, uh, and that's because they are really good looking watches for a decent price. Usually, um, these don't sell for a ton of money. I've owned a few monsters uh, in my time. I haven't owned anything special like this. I've owned pretty run-of-the-mill monsters, but um, this is a little bit special, and it looks special. It does look special on your wrist. That dial is why you would buy this. Uh, and like I said, I'll do close-ups of the dial. You sort of have a pattern. There's a little bit of blue. There's a little bit of white. There's a little bit of cream, a little bit of silver. Uh, just looks excellent. It really does look beautiful. Uh, Seiko do some amazing things with dials. Um, and it definitely bats way above its price range, even at that $1,500, uh, you know, dial-wise. So I definitely think that. Now, obviously, hard legs crystal and press clasp. Uh, push pins in the uh, in the bracelet. These are all things that we could argue about. 6R15, which is good good movement, not the best, but it's a very nice movement. But for that price, obviously, even at that $650 price where you would have bought this, it's still not the best. But anyway, very quickly, loom shot, wrap up the video. Loom Bright never disappoints. This is pretty good. Obviously, the dial itself is not loomed. It's the indices in the hands. However, it glows so brightly, it almost looks like it is uh, a loom dial on screen, but it's not. You just have a pip there to 12 o'clock on the bezel. Obviously, all the indices are loomed. You have a little uh, pointer on the second hand that is loomed. And of course, the hours, uh, the hour hand and minute hand is loomed. Very liberally applied with Loomer Bright. Loomer Bright lasts long um, and is really very, very good. Usually in loom sort of battles that I do on my channel, uh, Luma Bright always comes near the top. They always do really well. Seikos are excellent. I have an SBDC061. Loom on that is excellent, and it is always very bright. Anyway, 
Tell me what you guys think of this watch in the comments below. Like I said, I'll be doing a comparison with this watch. I just quickly uh, loomed it, just hit it with a little bit of loom. This is the Seastein with the fully loom dial. I literally just gave this 0.3 seconds of, uh, of the uh, UV light and you can see it's pretty insane. They loomed absolutely everything, even the date wheel, which is pretty incredible. Now, um, comparing it to this watch, to the uh, SBDC 073, will probably be a little unfair because this is obviously a newer watch and they've had time to, you know, really correct any of the mistakes that they made on this watch. Um, and even if you compare it to a current monster though, still, <laughs> I mean, let's not get into it yet. We'll talk about that in a later video. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I want to hear from you guys. I think it's a really cool watch. And like I said, the price is justified because it is discontinued, in my opinion. But tell me what you guys think of that as well in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.